I am a big fan of Charles Dickens' story, A Christmas Carol. It isn't Christmas to me unless I watch that one version of that movie, and there's so many, at least once during the holiday season. And it takes place in Old England, and the desserts that they had back then were some type of a pudding. And the puddings were always steamed-type puddings, figgy pudding or whatever. This is a modernized version, but it's still a steamed pudding. This is a chocolate cherry steamed pudding. I'm going to be making two different kinds for you today, a chocolate cherry one and then a gingerbread version. But we're going to do the chocolate cherry one right now. In a bowl, I have one and one-half cups of graham cracker crumbs. And to that, I'm going to add three-quarter cup of sugar, two tablespoons of flour, come on, get out there, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Get rid of that. And we'll just give this a whisk to get it going. It's a very, very easy recipe to make, and it's so delicious, I'm telling you. And it really makes, it has a wow factor when you bring it to the table, you'll see. Now, I'm going to put this aside and get another bowl. And in this bowl, I have six egg yolks. And in this small bowl, I have the whites. I'm going to put the whites aside for a moment while I work on the yolk part. I have two tablespoons of melted butter. I have one can of 21 ounce can of cherry pie filling. If you, have, if you want to make your own, that's fine. And actually, you can probably do this with strawberry pie filling if you'd rather, but I wouldn't go into blueberry in this. Then I have some red food color. I always buy the big economy size. Some almond extract. And then to finish it, I have a half a cup of chopped pistachios and one cup of the mini chocolate bits. So I'm going to start off by adding my extract. I need a half a teaspoon of almond extract. You don't want to do too much of the almond extract. It can be very overpowering. I'm going to put the two tablespoons of butter in there. I'm going to put in some red food coloring. How much? A couple drops? Maybe a little bit more. Four drops I put in. Let's see how red this comes out. Doesn't look very attractive at this point, I know. Okay, now I'm going to add approximately two-thirds of the can of cherry at this point. We need the rest of it for the finished product. All right, I'm going to put that aside. Get rid of this for a moment. And just fold in those cherries. So far, so easy, right? Dump in the bread, uh, the graham cracker crumb mixture and blend that. Again, not doesn't look too great right at this point, but it will. Now put that aside. Let me get rid of this. I need my room. All right. In my mixer bowl, I'm going to put in the six egg whites. And what I'm going to do here, and I've got one quarter cup of sugar. I'm going to beat these until I get soft peaks. Then I'm going to gradually add that one quarter cup of sugar. I'm going to beat it until I get stiff peaks. So a little noise. It'll take about three or four minutes. Check those out. Yes. We got our peaks. I'm going to take a little bit of this because I want to loosen this up. This batter here right now is pretty dense. So I'm just going to take a little bit. And yes, I'm mixing it roughly. That's okay. I'm just trying to loosen it up with that much. The rest of it, I'll be very careful with how I fold it. 
Now what we're going to do is we are going to steam this pudding. And that means I'm going to put it into a mold. And then it's going to go into my large pan of simmering water on the stove. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. Now, I'm going to add the rest of the whites. I first made this chocolate cherry Christmas pudding uh, maybe 15 years ago. And it's become a favorite ever since then. Um, my niece absolutely adores it. It's a wonderful, wonderful mixture. It's got a cakey, puddingy texture when you eat it. Now, when I talked about a mold, let me show you the mold I'm going to use. Take a moment away from that. I have here, this is a two quart pudding mold. Now, you're not going to find these just everywhere. But online, you can find them everywhere. Every place, I just Googled pudding mold this morning and found a bunch of them. I've had this one probably 30 years. And I found one exactly like it online, um, about $24. Um, if you don't have one, you can use a large coffee can. And this one has a lid. With the coffee can, what you would do is after you fill it, you would cover it with aluminum foil tie it with a string to keep that down, and that would be your covered pot to go into, your big pot of simmering water. I have heavily buttered the inside of this mold, even on the lid. The lid on this is a real pain in the neck to get off. It's kind of hard sometimes, and I'll probably struggle with it later, but you'll see what I mean. These pudding molds come in different kinds of shapes and sizes. Here's a couple others that I... Um, collected. Again, these are at least 30, 40 years old, and they're, they're really nice. They're obviously smaller than that, so if you were going to make this recipe, you probably would have to use two of these or one and one. But I like this one very much because I like the way it looks. It makes a nice tall presentation. So I'm going to finish folding this. Now that pot on the stove, again, it's got about four inches of water in the bottom, and it's simmering right now. I don't want this pudding mold sitting directly on the bottom of that pan. So I have a rack like this. I don't even remember where I got this rack. Again, I've had it for years. That fits in the bottom, and it's got these little feet, so it keeps the pan about that high off the bottom. You can have it that high off. So if you don't have something like this, you can use maybe empty tuna fish cans or cat food cans, nice and clean, bottoms and tops removed, and just put like three or four of them on the bottom of the pan. And just as long as it keeps it up high enough. I am going to right now put this in the pot. That is warm. Here we go. I want to finish doing this. Then I'm going to fill up my mold. And I'm going to put it in that pot with the cover on both, the cover on this and the cover on the pot. And I'm going to simmer it, not boil, simmer, for about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, I would check your pot, take the cover off every half hour or so, and if the water's getting low, add more water, because you don't want the pot to go dry. Okay. Actually, I probably should have put some more red food coloring in there, but... That's good enough. Oh, I almost forgot. Half a cup of pistachios. One cup of chocolate bits, the little minis. Fold those in. So you're going to get red cherries, green pistachios, and then the chocolate bits when you slice it. So I'm going to fill this up. Maybe I'll try doing it by lifting the bowl. Usually this bowl is so heavy.
And again, this is a two quart mold. You can use any other kind of mold you might have as long as it's metal or anything you can put into your steamer. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to take the top, goes on, and now I'm going to go put this in the pan, and I'm going to check it every 30 minutes, well, check the water at 30 minutes, but I'll check it at one hour. What you want to do is remove the top, put a toothpick in it, and if it comes out clean, a toothpick, or you can use a piece of spaghetti, which won't make as many holes in it, and you can test it to see if it comes out clean. It comes out clean, take it out of the pan, put this like it is, do not remove the cover, put it on a wire rack for five minutes, and then you can cool it, uh, take the cover off and unmold it. And you can eat this warm, which is when it is best. So in the pan, see you in about an hour, hour and a half. I've taken the pudding out of the hot water bath and it's been in there for approximately 80 minutes. And now I'm going to let it sit with the cover on. I'm going to just put it off to the side, and we're going to make a nice cream to go on top of it. So in my mixer, I'm putting in a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then I'm going to beat that until soft peaks, and then I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of confectioner's sugar and beat that until stiff peaks. And then remember that can of cherries that I used two-thirds of it? I'm going to put the one-third in there. So a little bit of noise takes a few minutes. the sugar. Let's take a look at that. It's good. And now I'm going to add the cherries to it. And any of the remaining juicy stuff in there. And just fold it in. And I wouldn't beat it too hard because you don't want it to deflate that, those nice stiff peaks there. So even if you don't put all, if some of the cream still shows, that's okay. It'll look like candy stripes, which is why I'm going to put it into a little thing right here. You can see, you can still see white in there. That's perfectly okay. Now, one of the things you can do on your holiday is you can have this all prepared and ready to go into the water bath. Sit down to your dinner with your family and friends. Put this in the water bath while you're eating. And by the time you finish eating and relaxing and everybody's ready for dessert, this should be done. So there's our cream. Now, moment of truth. That's still warm. Unmold it. Let me, let me give the sides a little help here. Just in case. I don't think it's going to stick, but it never has before. Let's put it that way. I almost lost it. Perfect. Perfect. Nice and warm. It's a beautiful, beautiful pudding. Now we're going to try serving a piece. It's still warm, which is the way you want it. Oh, and by the way, 
If there is any leftover, I kind of doubt there will be, but if there is and you want it warm again, you can put a single slice on a plate and microwave it for 20 seconds and it should be fine. So let's give it a cut. Oh my God, the, the smell of cherry and chocolate. Mmm, chocolate is still, is still melty and you can see the pistachios and the cherries. And now maybe a nice dollop of cherry cream. I want to get something with cherries in it. Maybe a couple of pistachios on top just to add to the color. And there you go. This is our chocolate cherry Christmas pudding. And here is another holiday steamed pudding. This time we're making a gingerbread pudding with a butterscotch warm sauce. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to use the same mold that I used in the other one. And again, I've heavily buttered the inside of it. And before I move on to the recipe, I'm going to take a half a cup of chopped pecans and just put those in the bottom. Kind of spread them around, put that aside for the moment. Now, let's make our pudding. Two cups of flour. In there, two teaspoons of grated ginger. Okay, and the other ingredients are going to be four eggs, six ounces, one and a half sticks of butter softened, two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup of chopped candied ginger. If you're not familiar with candied ginger, it comes like this, and it's, it's really, um, oh, it's delicious. Just to snack on it, it's wonderful. I use it in cakes, cookies, whatever. This piece is for me for snacking on later. And I have a third of a cup of dark corn syrup, and I have two teaspoons of vanilla that I'm going to put in. I'm gonna put my butter in my mixing bowl, and I have my big pot on the back of the stove with water that will come up to about half way up the uh, mold when we put it in there. And it's simmering, it's not boiling, it's simmering. I'm gonna add the brown sugar now. I'm gonna blend those up. Got to scrape it down because that butter is sticking to the sides. Add my vanilla, two teaspoons. And slowly add the eggs. Before that goes any further, I'm going to give this a good scrape down. Everything sticking to the sides. Put that down for a sec. Scrape it down well. 
And I think I will add at this point the dark corn syrup. Now, you're probably saying, why dark corn syrup and not um, molasses? Because gingerbread has molasses in it. Well, this is a recipe that I got um, from an old cookbook in England, and that's what they used. So that's what I'm using. So now, back on the mixer. We want to blend this well. gets blended up a little bit better I will start adding the flour. Now there's something I forgot to put in, and I'm going to add it now, which would be fine, is a half a teaspoon of baking powder, just to give it a little bit of lift. And now I'll also add in all of the candied ginger. This off. Wow, strong smell of ginger. It's wonderful. It's one of those warm spices, you know? Very holiday ish. Okay, and now. Just give it a last good mix because there was a little bit of flour on the sides. Now let's get it into our mold. This served warm and with a butterscotch sauce on it. Really delicious. Screams the holidays. And like I said, if you have not tried a steamed pudding, try it. It's like a pudding cake, almost. Okay. And I'm going to just... Grab my knife, just spread it around. Now I'm going to put the cover on it, and it's going to go into that simmering water bath for two hours. So I'll put it in the water bath, and I'll see you back in two hours. So I've just taken the gingerbread pudding out of the water bath, the steamer, and I'm going to, it's very, very, very hot. I'm going to put it off to the side for a few minutes while we make the sauce. 
So in my saucepan, I have two ounces of butter, which I have melted. I'm going to add to that one tablespoon of corn syrup. And also to that, I'm going to add five ounces of demerara sugar. And I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it is a brown sugar. It's got a nutty taste. It's just delicious. So I'm going to add five ounces in there. And I'm going to mix that up. Just mix it up until it's well blended. Let that sugar melt a bit, so give it like a minute or two. And in the meantime, I will get my evaporated milk. This is a five ounce can of evaporated milk. It's not sweet and condensed. And I will follow the instructions which say shake well. And open it up. Continue melting this for another minute or two. This is a butterscotch sauce. I'm going to add all of this, and now I want to wait until this comes to a boil. And that'll probably take three, you know, two, three minutes. All right, let's take a look at that pudding now. Still awfully hot. I'm gonna loosen up around the edges a little. Not that I think it needs it. It looks, because the pan was buttered so well. That is steaming hot, and you can see all the pecans on the top. And I thought, even though it doesn't need it, but I thought maybe just a couple of cherries on top to give it a very festive look, and a little bit of color because it's so brown. They don't want to stick very well, but... And there is our... I'm going to add one more, I think. This is my gingerbread holiday pudding. And I'm going to leave it for about another five minutes to really cool down. And then I'll show you a slice with some of the sauce.